and I have the pleasure of introducing Joe Fu, who is a professor of human geography and demography at St. Andrews. Um, Fu is Estonian, and he got his PhD at the University of Helsinki in Finland. Um, but I met him first when he was at the Max Planck Institute for Demographic Research in Rostock. It was a while ago. <laughs> And I think it was 2008. Um, and at that time, he was the leader of the research team on interdependencies in the life force, and also deputy head of the lab of contemporary European fertility and family dynamics. And I knew at that time that Hill was a, an up and coming star in the European demographic community. He was the editor of the European Journal of Population, and he really transformed this journal so that it is now the, the flagship journal of the European Population Society. Uh, after Rostock, he went to Liverpool, and he was there for about eight years. He continued to publish extensively in demography and geography journals, um, and again, we, we in the European demographic community really knew who he was, um, because he made such an impact uh, on, on the study of life force and uh, mobility, housing, and those types of Okay. Um, then in 2017, he went to St. Andrews, uh, where he was a professor there, and is currently there. And recently, he has uh, received several very large grants from ESRC. Uh, he was a large part of a large EU funded project. Uh, and he has, uh, through these projects, he's advanced our understanding of residential mobility, families, migration, health. And then just recently, he's received a European Research Council advanced grant. Um, and he has told me that he has come up with a, a great model of migration and population processes. But it's still a secret, so you're not going to see it today. Uh, but I would definitely say stay tuned, because this new project that he's embarking on will, of course, produce many findings. But today, as I understand it, we're going to see mm -hmm. some of the findings and insights from this last uh, research program that he's been leading. So welcome, Hill, and we look forward to seeing what you have to say. Uh, good morning, and many thanks, Brianna, indeed, uh, for these kind words. Of course, you a bit exaggerated. <laughs> uh, and uh, Brianna and uh, myself, we were at Max Planck Institute uh, uh, more than 10 years ago, I think, and you, you forgot one important fact that our children went to the same kindergarten. <laughs> So, so we have a lot of uh, common uh, experiences and then uh, later in the uh, UK. And uh, I would also like to thank Michaela for, for the invitation to come here and, and present uh, my research um, uh, to uh, you. So as you see, uh, this is a uh, um, uh, joint presentation with colleagues uh, from uh, seven European countries, and, and in total there are 18 of us, quite a long uh, list. And these all 18 people have uh, made a contribution uh, to uh, this talk in, in various ways. And this uh, presentation is, um, uh, was largely conducted within the Families and Societies uh, project uh, funded by uh, European Commission. Well, uh, as Brian already said. Uh, however, research has uh, continued also after the project ended, and, and parts of my activities have uh, been uh, funded by uh, Center for uh, Population uh, Change, which is a joint venture between the University of Southampton and Scottish universities, including uh, 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 the University of St. Andrews. Okay, now uh, let me begin with the background of our um, research. As we all know, uh, the share of immigrants has increased in most European countries in the last uh, decades. Uh, Southern European countries experienced a particularly rapid increase in the first decade of this century. So this figure is uh, about the share of uh, foreigners. Uh, this is uh, statistics uh, Eurostat provide us. It's not exactly as the share of immigrants, but uh, gives more or less an overview of trends. And clearly what we see, we see that the share of foreigners has gradually increased in all countries. And if you just focused on immigrants, 
because there is also naturalization going on here, uh, then you will see even uh, a, a more, more pronounced increase in the, uh, in the recent uh, decade. The number of descendants of immigrants has also increased. Uh, it is difficult to obtain precise uh, figures, but uh, uh, for the UK, for example, we know that uh, uh, immigrants and their descendants form about 20% of the uh, total uh, population. And the figure is very similar for many other countries which experienced uh, post-World War II uh, labor migration or where the destinations of post-World War II labor migration, for example, France, uh, Germany and uh, Sweden. And in Sweden, uh, I think there are also statistics, more precise statistics, it's around 25% if you take immigrants and descendants uh, from the second uh, generation. So, briefly, this is justification to do research on, on immigrants and their descendants. So they increasingly shape our social, uh, cultural uh, uh, and demographic uh, trends and of course also political trends, but I'm not going to say about that very much. And second, uh, with increasing size and share of immigrants and minority populations, uh, their integration and the issues of social cohesion have also become uh, important uh, uh, topics. Uh, broadly speaking, uh, there are two approaches uh, to immigrant uh, integration in social science research. And these all, both approaches come from the US literature. Uh, the first one is the classical assimilation approach, which assumes that over time and generations, immigrants and minorities become increasingly similar to their native population, ultimately becoming distinguishable from them. Although most studies in Europe uh, uh, use the notion of uh, integration uh, instead of assimilation, integration is normally perceived as a process where, uh, in which migrant values and, and behavior uh, converge toward the average of the host society or as the revised assimilation approach uh, states toward their peers in the majority group who are uh, similar in terms of socioeconomic origin, birth cohort and, and so on. In contrast, uh, the segmented assimilation theory uh, tells us that immigrants and their descendants adopt different integration uh, pathways. Uh, uh, certain groups experience cultural and economic integration into the middle class and also up, upward uh, mobility. And perhaps uh, the best example, uh, 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 examples here, example here is, is uh, uh, Europeans uh, in the US, so this is kind of historical example, but also even uh, nowadays. Uh, other groups assimilate into the so-called underclass. They experience cultural assimilation, but this is not coupled with uh, socioeconomic or uh, structural integration. And uh, Mexicans are in the US are quite often um, uh, given, uh, uh, well, provided as an example uh, for, uh, for this kind of uh, um, inter integration or assimilation outcome. And finally, uh, uh, a, a fraction of migrant and minority groups experience uh, uh, economic integration into the middle class, but experience a delayed uh, acculturation resulted in, uh, in the preservation of the immigrants' cultural characteristics. And uh, Jewish are um, uh, uh, example which is often uh, uh, provided in the literature. And you can think, of course, uh, the U uh, UK context also in similar terms. Sometimes people say that Irish are more similar to the uh, that, uh, second strategy and, and Jewish are uh, for the third. But, you know, it's a debatable, but you can find these uh, type of examples or discussions in the uh, literature uh, concerning more uh, established uh, immigrant and minority groups uh, in the uh, UK. Uh, our research uh, uh, has been inspired by, by these competing approaches to immigrant integration. So the question is why do we uh, focus on migrant uh, families? We focus on migrant families because uh, family is an important uh, uh, 
uh, to all of us and uh, we believe that family behavior and patterns reflects uh, immigrants in uh, uh, creation. And family, of course, is also closely related to other important life domains such as employment uh, and, and uh, housing. But I'm going to focus uh, mostly on family and a little bit bring in then as explanatory dimensions, uh, employment, uh, sorry, education, employment as, a, as a one of the explanatory or related uh, dimensions. Okay, uh, what I have planned to do uh, uh, today is uh, uh, first to provide an overview of family patterns among immigrants and their descendants in uh, uh, selected European countries. And this is going to be the main uh, part of my uh, presentation. And then I also want to discuss the relationship between family outcomes and integration for migrants and their descendants. And, and finally, perhaps the most uh, difficult topic, uh, the causes of differences in uh, family behavior between migrant uh, groups. But I'm really going to focus more on, on descriptive uh, part in uh, this uh, uh, presentation. So what aspects uh, of family life have we investigated? Uh, we have examined the uh, following uh, topics. Uh, first, uh, partnership formation and dissolution among immigrants and their descendants in selected European countries. Uh, for example, whether uh, they marry, whether they first marry or whether they first cohabit and then marry and uh, also uh, whether they stay married long or likely experience uh, divorce after some uh, years. And we know that partnership um, patterns have significantly changed over the last uh, decades uh, in Europe and elsewhere uh, in industrialized countries. Uh, premarital cohabitation has spread, uh, separation and divorce have become uh, common and also a repartnering. Uh, do immigrants and their descendants follow the same behavioral patterns or not? Second, uh, what we do, uh, we have also examined uh, uh, the spread of and determinants of intermarriage between natives and immigrants or, or ethnic minorities in selected European countries who marries within uh, their own ethnic uh, group and who marries uh, with uh, natives, if I may use this concept already now, but I'm going to define it later. And finally, what we have done, we have also examined uh, uh, childbearing patterns among immigrants and their uh, descendants, how many children immigrants and their descendants have and how does uh, uh, childbearing patterns vary across migrant and ethnic uh, groups. So these are the main dimensions, very typical uh, dimensions for, uh, for a demographer uh, who I am and in particular for people working in the area of family uh, uh, demo uh, demography. Uh, before I uh, present and discuss the results, I will say also a few words about uh, um, countries, uh, uh, groups we include, and also uh, data. And of course, we are using also understanding uh, society, as I am going to show uh, um, uh, you in a uh, moment. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, countries, uh, we study immigrants and their descendants in eight selected European uh, countries, uh, sometimes smaller numbers, sometimes I show you actually uh, two countries uh, here, but, uh, there are, uh, uh, but eight countries show up in different configurations in, in different uh, uh, studies. And uh, these countries are, as you see, UK, France, Belgium, Spain, but also Switzerland, Germany, Estonia, and Sweden. And uh, these countries represent both old and new immigrant countries. And old, for example, uh, are here uh, UK, uh, France, uh, uh, Sweden, and new ones are uh, Spain, uh, for example. And all these countries also differ in uh, 
post-World War II political and economic histories and very by welfare st uh, state provisions and policies. And uh, we think that these countries give quite a good uh, representation of all the major regions of Europe and broad variety of societal and demographic uh, regimes. Uh, most countries, uh, for most countries, we use uh, uh, survey data uh, 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 from the mid uh, 2000s and, and also from early, uh, early uh, this uh, decade. And for some countries uh, like Belgium and Sweden, uh, we use uh, register uh, data. But as you see, understanding society studies also here. Uh, even though we lag behind and many other papers I have heard uh, already which use the most recent waves, we just use first two waves and, and retrospective partnership, fertility and also employment uh, histories for a part of, uh, part of uh, population. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, groups, um, uh, we include uh, first the largest or the main immigrant groups in each country, for example, South Asians uh, 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 and uh, uh, Caribbeans in the UK or uh, those from the Maghreb regions from Turkey uh, in France and the same in Belgium. And then you see also uh, groups for Spain and uh, for uh, other uh, uh, countries. Uh, included in our uh, comparative uh, studies. And uh, we include both immigrants and uh, their descendants. Immigrants are those individuals uh, who were born abroad and then descendants of immigrants are individuals uh, whose one or both parents were born abroad. And natives are then uh, in these studies where uh, both parents were native born. So more or less consistency uh, with some uh, small variation uh, sometimes, particularly uh, in terms of mixed ma uh, marriages, whether mother's or father's uh, origin is more important, but overall uh, uh, quite consistent across uh, studies. Okay, uh, let me now move on and I'll show you really what have we observed and, and this is what you are really um, looking uh, forward, I, I believe. So let me now show you a selection of results and I begin with uh, partnership uh, uh, patterns. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you uh, first the patterns on Britain uh, and then move on and include some uh, other countries as well. So, uh, so very simple figure comes from sequence uh, analysis um, uh, and, uh, uh, and this figure shows the distribution of native British women by partnership uh, status uh, by age and these are cohorts born uh, between 1950 and uh, 69. So at age uh, 15 everyone is uh, single of course and, and then uh, things start to happen and if you look at uh, distribution of, uh, of these cohorts by age 40, you see that most uh, people are married by, uh, by age 40. Apologies, there is a mistake, so it should be just age on X axis. And now if you look at uh, Europeans, immigrants and their descendants, uh, you see very uh, similar patterns and I'm just going to show you the descendants of uh, European immigrants uh, and you see it looks uh, quite uh, quite uh, uh, similar. If we now move on uh, we see that uh, and focus on, on uh, immigrants from Pakistan and Bangladesh and their descendants so clearly what we see that uh, uh, by age 40 uh, most immigrants from uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh are married uh, there are virtually no other uh, groups, uh, neither uh, very few uh, still single and, and, and not really many experienced uh, other uh, uh, transitions or, or separation or, or divorce. If you now look uh, 
uh, the descendants of immigrants. So interestingly, you see that the patterns are, are relatively uh, similar. Uh, most uh, people really being married by age uh, 40, but uh, there is a group of uh, people who have experienced uh, uh, divorce. Immigrants uh, from Caribbean countries uh, show uh, specific patterns. Clearly, uh, there is much more uh, diversity here in comparison to, uh, uh, to other groups I just uh, showed you. You see that the majority of, still, uh, majority of Caribbean immigrants are still married by age 40. Uh, there are those who are single, uh, but also those who, have, uh, uh, who are separated uh, uh, or divorced. And if you look uh, the descendants of Caribbeans, you actually see even more heterogeneity. So all uh, groups are more or less equally uh, 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 present which, or represented, which is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, interesting. Okay, uh, this was uh, our British case study. Uh, let us now include uh, also in migrant groups from uh, France in the analysis and I'm going to show you a bit different model here and, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, 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 first the uh, transition rates uh, to uh, marriage or direct marriage and then to cohabitation. So people are single then they can either go directly to marry or first go to cohabitation and uh, then marry. So, uh, and here are the results uh, uh, on the spread of marriage, how to read these. Uh, so, uh, our reference group is uh, native British uh, people. So, they provide the baseline rate and all other marriage rates are compared uh, to uh, this uh, group. So, clearly what we see that immigrants from uh, South Asia and also their descendants have very high direct marriage rates whereas uh, Caribbeans have very low uh, direct marriage rate, independent of whether they are immigrants or uh, their descendants. So, and now this is what we already know, so I'm just repeating what I basically showed you on previous slides, but now we have also France uh, here and clearly you, you see in France uh, immigrants uh, uh, from Turkey have very high direct marriage rate and this also applies to the, uh, their uh, descendants. And to some extent also uh, those from the North Africa have higher levels. Whereas groups from uh, Africa, for example, have a low, uh, much lower uh, direct uh, marriage uh, rates, just to highlight uh, some uh, groups. And uh, now comes another possibility, people then uh, just uh, cohabit and of course the patterns are more or less opposite what you expect here. So native British and native French have relatively high rates. Uh, South Asians in the UK have uh, low rates what you expect but also have also people from Turkey, uh, from Maghreb uh, region, both immigrants and also their descendants. And then there are some other groups also, but I'm not going to uh, spend more time on uh, that. Okay, uh, this was about uh, partnership uh, formation. Uh, um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on and uh, show you uh, uh, the prevalence of mixed uh, marriages. And uh, the spread of mixed marriages is sometimes called as the ultimate uh, litmus uh, test of immigrant and ethnic minority integration. Even you could consider this as an indicator of, uh, or, or the pathway also to, uh, to uh, assimilation. But at least the most important thing is it tells that if uh, intermarriage rates are high, then this means that the boundaries are not anymore very strong between uh, different groups. This is probably the most important uh, the message or why we study that. So again, what I'm going to do, you, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, present first some results from Britain and, and then include uh, some more countries, not only France, but uh, also Belgium and, and uh, some other uh, countries. 
Okay, and there comes uh, okay, the process, uh, endogamous and exogamous marriages, and uh, then uh, I have also some uh, numbers uh, here which I wanted to uh, uh, show you. So I will start first uh, uh, general level of, of uh, marriage rates and then uh, move on to uh, compare uh, endogamous and exogamous marriages. Okay, so what we, uh, we see here in this uh, slide is that we present a marriage rate for uh, female immigrants and uh, also their descendants per 1,000 uh, person year. So these are uh, demographic rates. So where in the numerator you have counts and in the denominator you have uh, uh, re, uh, uh, risk time or how long uh, people are, how many people are under the risk and how long multiplied by how long. So it's a demographic uh, rate what we are dealing with. And these are un uh, unadjusted rates but they provide a good overview of marriage patterns among population subgroups and, and the prevalence of exogamous uh, marriages. First, what we see, uh, uh, we see that uh, um, immigrants from India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, they have uh, very high marriage rates in general speaking about early marriages and also universal marriages which we already observed. And for Caribbeans you see the rates are relatively low speaking about later marriages and also lower marriage levels. And second, for second generation, the levels are lower as you expect, but clearly you see again uh, this difference of what uh, I already showed you in a bit different form uh, in my previous slides. So uh, what we now do, or what we have done also, we have calculated marriage rates separately for endogamous and exogamous marriages, and then also uh, 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 endogamous marriage rate uh, uh, divided by exogamous marriage rate or rate ratios showing, uh, showing uh, uh, the prevalence of endogamous marriages relative to exogamous uh, marriages. And this is the last column. So we divide basically this by that and get uh, this one. And this is disaggregated from that, right? And there is a rounding error as you see. So what I'm going to uh, show you now, I'm going to show you these, uh, these rate ratios uh, in a graph. So it helps uh, you to uh, capture quickly uh, the main uh, patterns. Okay, uh, so then this figure uh, shows, shows uh, uh, these uh, 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 rate ratios or endogamous marriage rate divided by exogamous marriage rate. And clearly what we see, there, there is a significant variation. Immigrants uh, from Europe are, sorry, are 60% uh, less likely to marry endogamously uh, than exogamously. So in other words, uh, uh, exogamous marriage is uh, dominant among this group, uh, which is uh, clear. Uh, if we look then uh, Indians and Pakistanis, so we see that uh, they are 5 to uh, 14 times and this actually goes uh, higher and more likely to marry within the group. Uh, uh, and the corresponding figure for Caribbeans is 1.7. 1, 1 and if you look the descendants of immigrants, clearly we see that, uh, that the prevalence of exogamous marriages uh, uh, that there is a higher prevalence of exogamous marriages than among immigrants, which is as expected. Also, uh, perhaps most striking thing is to see these clear group differences. Uh, clearly, Europeans are marrying mostly exogamously or are in mixed marriages, and Pakistani, Bangladeshi populations are still in, in endogamous marriages or in intra-group marriages, and Indians and Caribbeans are here uh, to some extent in, uh, uh, in between. Okay, uh, next, as I promised, I'm going to include also in the analysis other, other uh, groups and these, uh, or other countries. And we've got here France, uh, Switzerland and Belgium. And clearly you see this is just repeating and now focusing only on the descendants of immigrants. 
And clearly we see that in France, very similar group are population of Turkish origin, uh, who is much more likely or uh, nine times more likely to marry endogamously than exogamously, whereas uh, those from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Europe have very low uh, uh, endogamous marriage uh, rates or high. They are mostly intermarriage. And among Belgi uh, in Belgium, again, we see that uh, uh, Northern Africans and people of Turkish origin have, are much more likely to marry uh, within uh, the group than uh, out of uh, the group. Okay, uh, right, that was second part and now comes next, next part, so, uh, which is then our final part, which is uh, childbearing patterns, focusing on fertility. So just to see also how, um, uh, uh, what, what are the fertility patterns across uh, these uh, groups. And again, I'm going to go through this very similar uh, steps, uh, first focusing on, 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 on Britain and, and then uh, bringing in also other uh, European uh, countries. So uh, this figure is about uh, the distribution of British women by completed uh, family size by age and uh, x-axis shows the proportion and uh, sorry y-axis and x-axis shows uh, the women's age. Again apologies the same, same mistake is uh, uh, here. So what we see, we see that uh, by age 40, around 15% of women are childless. And this is uh, average for the, these cohorts. Of course, it has increased over cohorts, uh, but we just take average uh, here. So then you see some 10%, a bit more, are, have one child. Then comes the largest group, uh, which is 40% uh, who have uh, two children and uh, then 30% have uh, three or more children. Again, Europeans showing here just uh, descendants of Europeans show more or less similar patterns and of course there are confidence intervals and, and group is small and all, all these caveats but, uh, uh, but largely speaking very uh, similar uh, pattern uh, can be uh, observed for uh, Europeans. So, what about uh, Pakistani uh, and pa uh, immigrants from pa uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh and their descendants? So, we see that only 5% among immigrants are childless by age 40. And other thing, what clearly is uh, uh, visible here uh, around uh, what is the percentage exactly I've written? 70% of them have uh, more than, right, uh, 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 three or more uh, children. So it's uh, relatively a large. Uh, families dominate, even though there is some heterogeneity within the group. And now if we look, uh, um, uh, look at the patterns among the descendants of immigrants, uh, we see, uh, of course, more variability uh, here. However, having said that, 60% uh, of them still have uh, three or more uh, uh, children. So still quite a significant group has large families, even though there are also those uh, uh, who have one child or, or two children, uh, who have two uh, children. And these percentages are larger than for the uh, immigrant uh, group. Okay, and uh, now Caribbeans. So what do you think about Caribbeans? Large um, correct, large families are also there, but uh, actually very similar to what we observed for, uh, for uh, partnership patterns. So there is uh, uh, also uh, quite a lot of heterogeneity. So you see uh, among immigrants, uh, childless, and also one child, two children, uh, and, and these are a bit bigger ones, and if you look uh, second generation, you see a very similar, uh, even though there is a bigger group of, of, of childless. 
uh, here. But large families are also uh, here and, and we see actually in, in, in our, our models in a moment that uh, these large families or they have higher rates of going to uh, third uh, uh, birth also. Okay, uh, again a British case study. No. We go to the comparative study where we put uh, some more countries and in a bit uh, different, uh, uh, different um, um, uh, uh, settings. And this is a setting where we, we then uh, fit uh, 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 survival models or event history uh, models. And uh, what, uh, what we are doing here, we are, I'm going to show you uh, first birth and then also uh, a third birth in order to measure the level of, excuse me, uh, childlessness and uh, the prevalence of, of large families. This is a way how uh, demographers uh, quite often tend to do, focusing on, on these uh, two uh, uh, transition from zero to one and from uh, two uh, to uh, three. And there are a bit more complexities uh, here, uh, just to say you that I have uh, done two different models here. One group of countries which have a, a bit earlier childbearing and, 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 and those then a group, other group of countries which have a bit later uh, uh, childbearing uh, and this is uh, uh, done in order to better focus on the levels rather than timing of uh, birth. As you know uh, first birth models uh, tend to capture both timing and, and, and levels and, and it's difficult to tease out which is more important. And here what we do, we have two different uh, uh, group of uh, countries. Okay, the first countries, uh, those countries which have first birth a bit uh, earlier than other uh, group of uh, uh, countries. And uh, uh, largely speaking, what we see, we see that uh, for most countries, uh, um, uh, fertility or first birth rates are uh, very uh, similar to the uh, natives, sorry, uh, first birth rates among descendants of immigrants are relatively similar to that of uh, natives or, or a little bit lower. But then there are a few exceptions. Uh, 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 people of, uh, from, uh, of Pakistani or Bangladeshi descent in the UK, those of Turkish origin in France, and uh, also uh, those of Turkish origin in Belgium and we can leave Estonia out. It, it is a bit a specific uh, context uh, uh, here. But we see also some, uh, some uh, uh, surprising findings or at least uh, a few. There are a couple of groups which have lower first birth rates like Italians and Moroccans uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium and maybe I comment uh, these uh, later also if there is any uh, questions on that. And a second group of countries are then uh, 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 Germany, uh, Switzerland, Sweden and, and uh, also Spain and again very uh, similar uh, picture. Most groups are, have, uh, minority groups are very similar first birth rate than uh, natives, a bit higher rates for um, women of uh, Turkish origin showing the smaller level of childlessness among this group in comparison to German natives, but also uh, earlier uh, childbearing in uh, uh, general. And the same uh, for Switzerland. This group is actually a combination of uh, uh, people from uh, uh, South Slavic uh, republics and, and, and from uh, Turkey. And for Sweden, we don't actually see much uh, variation here, but interestingly, uh, women uh, from Iran have a lower uh, rates uh, here, which is something also uh, uh, to uh, think about why this might be the case. Okay, but uh, for third birth, uh, third birth, uh, there are uh, much more vari variation, and we have a uh, uh, fitted model here for five countries, uh, including then all these major. Uh, descendant uh, groups and all or most descendant groups uh, show high fertility levels. Uh, third birth rates are high among Pakistan and Bangladeshi uh, or women of uh, uh, Pakistani and Bangladeshi descent in the UK among those of Indian and also Caribbean origin 
uh, you see, and, and this is what we already know, in France you see uh, all groups who come from uh, 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 North or North Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa and also uh, 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 for women of Turkish origin. And very similar patterns are uh, for uh, uh, those groups uh, in Belgium. Again, women of Turkish and Moroccan origin have higher uh, third birth rate than, uh, than a native there and also elsewhere in these, uh, uh, these countries. So, uh, in contrast, uh, third birth rates are low in, in uh, low for southern Europeans uh, in France and, and Belgium. And in Sweden, uh, most minorities have uh, similar levels uh, to natives, but then there is a uh, people of Turkish origin again having uh, higher rates, but uh, uh, not particularly high, but at least high in Swedish uh, uh, context. Well, uh, um, these are basically all the results I can show you. Now I would like to make um, some conclusions and, and then also say a few words about how we can see this in the context of, of, uh, of these uh, competing uh, um, integration approaches and, and also a bit about causality. I'm going to say something about causality. Good. Okay, uh, to sum up, uh, what are the main findings? Uh, uh, the first thing to emphasize is that we observe a significant diversity in partnership patterns and family forms among immigrants and their descendants within and between countries. And that's a relatively clear finding. Uh, uh, second, uh, partnership and childbearing patterns of the descendants of immigrants are in between those of immigrants and natives although they vary across uh, groups and also by dimensions of family life. For some groups and dimensions of family life, the patterns among the second generation are more similar to those of uh, the first generation. For example, uh, the mode of uh, first union among South Asians and Turkish population. Uh, for some groups and I mentioned they are in between and an uh, example is uh, separation and divorce rates. I didn't show you but then you see a bit uh, more kind of being in between immigrants and, and uh, natives. And the third point I really didn't emphasize here perhaps uh, it was that the country context also shapes partnership and childbearing behavior of ethnic minorities and perhaps the simplest example is that in Sweden you see much more homogeneous uh, patterns what you would uh, uh, done elsewhere and this is what you expect based on all, uh, all, all uh, approaches uh, but all, all findings uh, also from other studies which show a smaller variation in, um, in Swedish uh, context. Uh, broadly we can speak about uh, three uh, groups in Europe, three groups of immigrants and uh, their descendants. Uh, the first group is formed mostly of immigrants from other European countries and their descendants and also Latin Americans belong to uh, this group. Many of them are in exogamous unions with natives and their partnership and fertility patterns are similar to those of natives. So the second uh, group consists of uh, South Asians uh, in the UK and those of uh, Turkish uh, um, uh, and uh, North African uh, background in France, Belgium, Germany uh, and also in Sweden. So characteristic to this group is the prevalence of intra-group marriages uh, and conservative uh, partnership forms with high marriage rates and low cohabitation and separation levels. Uh, many individuals uh, from these groups have large families with uh, three uh, to uh, four uh, children. And finally the third uh, group which is uh, quite interesting actually which was to some extent surprising finding and this consists of immigrants from Caribbean countries and also from, uh, from uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, sub-Saharan uh, countries in Western Europe. 
So some of them are in, in endogamous unions, but many are in their relationships with natives or other ethnic uh, minorities. They have low marriage levels and high cohabitation and separation rates. And this diversity in partnership uh, patterns is also reflected in their family forms. Uh, some have uh, small families, uh, whereas others have uh, families with uh, three uh, children. So how to interpret uh, the results? In the light of uh, integration theories, I think at first glance uh, we can say that these seem to support uh, a segmented assimilation approach. Uh, there are groups who rapidly integrate or assimilate uh, to the mainstream society, at least in terms of family patterns such as Europeans and uh, Latin Americans. Of course you could say that they come also from countries where uh, family and fertility patterns are uh, relatively uh, similar. But more importantly, then there are, uh, there are groups who experience a delayed acculturation, for example, individuals of South Asian, Turkish, and also North African origin. So we see these kind of two groups emerging, and then there is, of course, a, a third group as well, which is internally already uh, heterogeneous and could support uh, these uh, different um, or, or be seen as a support of, for these different, different uh, assimilation outcomes or pathways. On the other hand, uh, we could think that this is just a, a snapshot and what we have observed is just the, that they all are in different stages on the long road of integration or assimilation. And the fact that uh, the second generation is somewhere in between immigrants and natives seems to provide some support to this arg argument. Uh, although this is not always uh, uh, the case for uh, Pakistan and Bangladeshi uh, ethnic minorities where they're, they were still very similar to the uh, first generation. But you could say that there is gradual change happening everywhere or for all groups, but uh, but they are in uh, different stages, but eventually go toward the same uh, outcome. So anyway, there is a diversity clearly, but, but it is uh, difficult to, to interpret this uh, diversity. How to interpret this uh, remains unclear. Another important uh, question is related to the causes of observed uh, diversity. So do the observed uh, patterns uh, reflect cultural diversity or rather uh, are related um, to the uh, poor economic and social integration of some ethnic minority groups in Europe? So we did, of course, lots of modeling in these comparative studies, but also we had uh, uh, many, many country case studies and in these studies we included, uh, uh, we included uh, basic economic variables or uh, human capital variables, uh, education and also employment. And interestingly what we observed, we observed that when we included these variables, education and employment status, so then some differences in partnership patterns and fertility patterns between immigrants and natives were explained away, or at least they explained to some extent some differences, uh, but relatively little uh, uh, explanation was found uh, differences between uh, descendants of immigrants and natives. So. And what seems to be more important, uh, uh, instead, family of origin. So if we included family of origin in our models, so then this played, or this was, uh, this explained quite a lot of differences uh, between uh, immigrants, their descendants, and also uh, natives. And what are these, uh, what is this family of origin? So particularly two variables, one was the number of siblings, so how many siblings one has, and secondly also 
the strength of religiosity, not the domination, but uh, the strength of uh, religiosity. So, and based on that, we could say, for example, why some ethnic minorities have high uh, families. They have high families because they are more religious, but even more importantly, uh, because they come from large families. And anyone who is more religious and comes from a large family is more likely to have him or herself uh, large uh, families. However, as always with these models, of course, significant variation still remained after, after we included uh, these um, uh, variables which uh, uh, reflect a family of origin. What is the remaining part? Can be cultural factors, but equally can be uh, uh, some uh, socioeconomic uh, factors which we were not able uh, to uh, measure in uh, these uh, studies. Uh, to su sum up, I just want to reiterate that uh, what we have learned from this study clearly is that uh, uh, there is a significant diversity of family forms among immigrants and their descendants in uh, European countries. And this diversity is here uh, to stay and we uh, shouldn't expect very quick changes. Uh, some changes happen uh, faster, other may take, uh, may take uh, place across generations, particularly if uh, they are, uh, reflect uh, cultural preferences and uh, minority identities. That's all. I hope I managed on time, yes. Thank you very much.